As a basketball legend, there wouldn't be many better feelings in the world than seeing your son continue your legacy after you retire. But unfortunately, this has never really happened. Though there are still formidable NBA role players that have produced extraordinary sons, like Del Curry producing all-time great Steph Curry, when it comes to first ballot Hall of Famers, their production on the human end tends to be disappointing. And although some sons of basketball legends don't even pursue basketball, with some even having rather problematic lives, there are still some sons of NBA legends that try to mirror their father's footsteps to make it to the NBA. So without further ado, let's take a look at the careers of the sons of some of the best players in NBA history. Welcome to Sportsphere. Let's get into it. When your father is the best basketball player of all time, the expectations are going to be very high on you. That was the case for Jeffrey and Marcus Jordan. NBA expectations were put on both of the boys from an early age, especially when they took their high school Loyola College to their best ever season. The hype was so massive, all because of their father. To the extent that three of Jeffrey Jordan's high school games were shown on ESPN to the entire nation. Not really because of his game, but purely because of who his father was. The older of the two boys, Jeffrey committed to the University of Illinois as a walk-on, and it took until his third season for Jeffrey to even receive an athletic scholarship. The issue for Jeffrey was that he was six foot one and was not blessed with his father's natural abilities. Jeffrey left Illinois for UCF in 2010 to join up with younger brother Marcus. During both of their times at UCF, it became clear neither of the brothers were good enough to play in the NBA. In 2012, they both left the basketball team for personal reasons and still went on to complete their degrees. The pressure that must have come with being the son of Michael Jordan was just too much for the boys. And they didn't even make it past the college stage. Jeffrey Jordan later entered a Nike management training program before founding the Jordan Awaken Group in 2020, a Chicago-based consultant group. But unfortunately, later in 2021, Jeffrey would be arrested for assaulting hospital staff in Arizona. Exact details of the incident weren't released, but this doesn't seem to be a great look for Jeffrey. As for Marcus Jordan, his professional career continued in the realm of opening his own sneakers store, Trophy Room, in Orlando, Florida. But Marcus recently made headlines for a strange relationship, one with the ex-wife of the greatest teammate his father ever had, Larsa Pippen. This was not only alarming because who Marcus's father was, and who Larsa's ex-husband was, but the age difference was also strange, with Larsa being 49 and Marcus being 33. Their relationship has been on and off for quite some time now, but regardless, Marcus Jordan has now become quite the internet personality because of it. Speaking of the Pippins, Scottie Pippen is probably the best sidekick in NBA history. He was a crucial part of the Bulls winning multiple championships and is an NBA Hall of Famer, and MJ wouldn't be who he is today without Scotty. While his son, Scotty Pippen Jr., is carving out a nice career for himself at the moment, when your father is an NBA legend, there's often just one career you'd like to have, even more so when you're named after your dad. So Scotty Jr. started playing basketball at a very young age. Having originally attended Pinecrest School in Florida, the family moved to LA and Scotty transferred to Sierra Canyon, in part to help his basketball career. He would play alongside future NBA players Marvin Bagley, Kenyon Martin Jr., and Cassius Stanley while in high school. Pippen was fairly impressive throughout his time at Sierra Canyon, enough to get some solid college offers and soon headed to Vanderbilt. In three seasons with Vanderbilt, Pippen had some impressive stats, including back-to-back 20-point -back seasons, it was not enough for him to be selected in the NBA draft, but Pippen was still signed by the Lakers after going undrafted. However, he would only feature in six regular season games for the Lakers before release. Having signed with the Memphis Grizzlies, Pippen was balling before an injury, averaging over 10 points, 3.4 rebounds, and 4.5 assists in eight games, even putting up a career-high 19 points against the league-leading Celtics in a loss in February. A lower back injury has kept Pippen out of action, but it looks like he will be a nice young piece, as a part of the Grizzlies' rotation when he returns from injury. Dwayne Wade was one of the most exciting players in the NBA for more than a decade. So like many NBA greats, there was hope that his son could be something similar in the league. 
Those expectations only got greater when Wade's oldest son, Zaire, transferred to the famous Sierra Canyon for his senior year of high school. After the senior year, Zaire was rated as a three-star prospect. So he decided to head to Brewster Academy instead of heading straight to college. When Zaire did start getting attention from colleges, he decided to go pro instead. Despite offers from Nebraska, DePaul, and Toledo, Zaire chose to head to the G League. He was selected 10th overall in the 2021 G League draft by the Salt Lake City Stars, aiming to take a unique road to the NBA. He struggled in that first season with Salt Lake City before suffering a season-ending injury in March 2022, and Zaire was waived by his team not long after. Zaire has since made a comeback to basketball with the Cape Town Tigers of the South African Basketball League, but I don't think it is massively likely that we will see Zaire in the NBA anytime soon. There might not be a more dominant player in NBA history than Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq became a force with the Los Angeles Lakers, powering his team to a three-peat to start the 21st century. Shaq added a fourth title with the Miami Heat, and he retired as one of the best players the league has ever seen. So Shaq's oldest son, Sharif, was always going to have a lot of eyes on him as he started his basketball career. Sharif was actually able to dunk when he was just 13 years old, and his high school highlights became nationwide news. When he was just 15, Sharif was already getting college offers. Some saw Sharif as a much more skillful big man than Shaq, closer to the centers of today rather than a replica of his father. Having initially committed to Arizona, Sharif eventually committed to play for UCLA. But in his first summer with the Bruins, Sharif was struggling with health issues and eventually had to undergo serious heart surgery. Sharif was diagnosed with a heart condition and he missed his entire first season. The great news is that Sharif has been able to make a full recovery from the surgery. After playing sparingly at UCLA, Sharif followed in the footsteps of his father and transferred to LSU. Sadly, Sharif was very limited in his game time due to foot injuries. After two years with the Tigers, he went undrafted in 2022. Sharif would play for the Lakers, the same team his father won three titles with. But that was just over the summer league before he headed to the G League. Sadly for Sharif, his heart condition slowed his career down, and the NBA looks too far for the youngster. As for Shaq's youngest son, Shakir, he's currently in his sophomore season of college, playing a very limited bench role for the Southern Texas Tigers, averaging just over 10 minutes per game and two points. Without currently being ranked as a prospect, it is also unlikely that Shakir O'Neal will be in the NBA anytime soon. If you speak to any guard who played in the NBA in the 1990s, there is one guy who everyone hated playing against. That man was Gary Payton. So modern NBA players must have been very concerned when they saw his son was signed to the league. Gary Payton II was never seen as the most talented player on the court growing up. And basketball wasn't often his primary focus, having been focused primarily on swimming for a year in high school. He soon committed to basketball, before playing for two years at Salt Lake Community College prior to transferring to Oregon State. In college, Peyton showed some of the aspects of his game were similar to his father's. He was able to do it all on the court and was eventually named as one of the finalists for the Bob Cousy Award, before even being on the watch list for the Naismith Player of the Year. Despite that, he went undrafted in 2016 signing with the Rio Grande Valley Vipers of the G League. After bouncing around the NBA, Peyton's breakout season in the G League was in 2021. He was named G League Defensive Player of the Year and led the entire league in steals. He was rewarded with a contract to the Golden State Warriors becoming an NBA champion in 2022, despite an injury scare during the campaign. After a short stint in Portland, Peyton is back with the Warriors now. As a defensive-minded player who plays with good intensity, he fit into the Warriors' culture very well and has become a very important rotation piece. While he might not ever receive the accolades that his father did, Gary Payton II is still a solid NBA professional, good role player, and has had a better basketball career than the son of many other NBA greats. You probably know John Stockton as the all-time leader in assists and steals for the NBA, but did you know that there were two younger Stocktons who were in and among the league? Older son Michael Stockton played four years for Westminster College before going undrafted in 2011. While he did have two campaigns with the Utah Jazz in the Summer League, he never actually played an NBA game. Instead, 
Michael would begin a long career playing in countries like Germany, Greece, and Ukraine. Younger son David Stockton was slightly higher rated despite being less than six feet tall. He was with Gonzaga for four years in college coming off the bench for most of that time. David did help Gonzaga win the 2014 WCC tournament. But despite those accolades, he went undrafted in 2014. After a stint in the summer league with the Phoenix Suns, David was briefly with a few different teams, including the Sacramento Kings and Washington Wizards. He would play three games for the Kings before a season in the G League. Stockton would return to the NBA in 2018. He followed in the footsteps of his father by playing three games for the Utah Jazz. Sadly, things didn't work out for the younger Stockton as he was released shortly after. While he has been worked out by multiple different NBA teams, we haven't seen another Stockton in the NBA ever since his brief stint with Utah. Being the son of the king can't be easy, but it really looks like we could have a James dynasty in the NBA pretty soon. LeBron James has got not one, but two NBA prospect sons who have an opportunity to enter the NBA in the near future. LeBron's oldest son, Bronny, grew up playing basketball, and his highlights were hitting the news by the time he was 10. Bronny played at Sierra Canyon School alongside Zaire Wade, and after four years of high school, was widely regarded as a four-star prospect and committed to playing basketball at USC. A heart issue has made his first season of college basketball very difficult. But the oldest James son is an unselfish point guard who can catch and shoot as well as create for his teammates. But the scarier thing is that LeBron's younger son Bryce might be even more talented. Bryce is already taller than his older brother, despite being just 16 years old. Currently playing for Sierra Canyon, Bryce is already attracting plenty of offers from colleges. He's a rangy athlete who has all of the fundamentals to be an excellent prospect, also hailed as the best shooter of his household by LeBron himself. Both of the James sons have very high basketball IQs. I'm sure it helps when you're raised by one of the best to ever do it. Although some may see LeBron's comments on his sons as creating added pressure for them. Who knows, maybe the James dynasty does continue, with one of his sons still potentially becoming an NBA great. Speaking of NBA greats, Carmelo Anthony retired without a championship ring, but his son Keon is hoping to bring the Anthony family their first NBA title. At the time of the recording, Keon is just 17 years old. He has been a standout performer for his high school team and is already ranked as a top 50 prospect of the 2025 recruiting class. Despite not even being in college yet, Keon has already signed an NIL deal. Based on who he is, colleges are lining up to sign him, including Syracuse, where his father won a national championship in 2003. Keon had a visit to his father's old school in October 2023, where he even met head coach Jim Boheim. It's not going to be an easy decision for the younger Anthony. He has already received many Division I offers from colleges such as Michigan, Florida State, Illinois, and Memphis. In total, he already has a whopping 17 offers. The talented shooting guard is fast, agile, and skillful. He seems to be able to knock down shots from all over the court just like his father. We're still a very long way away from seeing whether Kean Anthony can actually make it to the NBA, but chances are he'd be drafted in the 2025 draft. He hasn't even decided where he wants to go to college yet. But who knows? Maybe we're seeing the next great Fatherson duo in NBA history. Anyways, that's it for the video. What happened to the sons of NBA greats that seriously pursued basketball? Who do you think is the best father-son connection in NBA history? Why not put your thoughts in the comments down below? While you're down there, hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching SportsFear, and we'll see you next time.